The Leopold Tennis Association was formed in 1971. It was formed as a response to the growing disillusionment from tenants about the quality of the housing that was built in the 1960s and also because of the growing isolation that those houses, housing would be informed. That was the growing isolation that was a result of those homes. The Leopold Estate was built between 1968 and 1976, replacing traditional London terrace homes that were severely bombed during the Second World War, up to two thirds of the Leopold area was bombed during the Second World War it's because of the obviously because of the um, proximity to the London docks and also because the remaining homes were by 1960 considered slums. You read some of the housing reports from the London County Council of the time it shows some of the quite shocking date some of those homes were in and of course none of them had inside toilets or other um, essential amenities like bathrooms. The first homes were what we used to call the grey blocks and they were very very quickly built within 18 months they were built and from day one they were a problem. The Liverpool Tent Association um, was essentially a community organisation. It held events in, initially in, in people's homes and also in local pubs, the Cotton Arms and the Galloway. They, and then in 1976, with the second wave of housing in the Leopold area, they got their own tenant hall. And that allowed them to organise their own events. And the first big event they held was for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977, which I am proud to say I was actually a an attendee and they also held a community bar that people joined for a minimal interest fee and the um, cost of beers in there and were considerably below pub prices and those were held in, held in open a few nights a week and held regular events like discos and bands at the weekends. Also, the campaigning element was not forgotten. They held regular um, meetings with the Greater London Council and the um, other interested parties. The right to buy was the first big change and challenge for the association. It's worth bearing in mind that in 1976 everyone was largely the same. They were all local authority tenants, everyone had the same tenants agreement and everyone was largely the same. Right to buy started to change all that. People bought their own homes, so their priorities were starting to change. Also, but there were now leaseholders, they started to sell their homes. So we had the second generation of residents who are the private landlords, private or private tenants and their priorities, as I say, greatly change. Also, 
with the abolition of the DLC, the landlord changed. It was now to have the council. And they had a slightly different attitude towards tennis associations. They actually encouraged them greatly more. They, did. they gave a grant, which I meant to don't recall the GLC ever done, to all from her newsletters and things like that. But it became increasingly the case that to make the change, you had to be political. And that was something that, quite rightly, the Leopold Trent Association, and indeed most tennis associations, never were. The 1990s onwards were very challenging times for all tennis associations, but particularly the Leopold one. The demographic of the area was changing totally. People's idea of social life was changing totally. This means that the community bar was becoming less and less popular. The amount of influence the Tents Association was having was also decreasing. It felt very much as though it was just going through the routines, holding meetings, but actually not a lot were changing. In fact, very, very little were changing. The Leopold Estate, like all housing estates, were going through the first wave of what we now call antisocial behaviour. The, then we called vandalism and hooliganism, but Damage was being called by local residents who basically weren't caring or didn't have the same values of what other people do. That's not to say that the Tenth Association in the 1990s and early 2000s didn't have tremendous successes. Community was still working to a limited extent. I think the um, celebrations in the, on the Leopold Day about the millennium were one of the, some of the best we ever held. Also, we held some very, very invigorating meetings with people like the Director of Housing at Tower Hamlets who made some very sudden promises, which we publicised, but ultimately didn't come true, but she made the promises. Things changed in 2001. In 2001, um, there was an incident whereby a balcony fell off one of the grey blocks. When the actual balcony actually fell from the top floor right to the bottom. Fortunately, no one was on the balcony and no one was underneath it at the time. Otherwise it could have been an even greater tragedy. But it made residents realise that the state of quo could not be allowed to continue. If you wanted action, it had to be through a total change. It couldn't just be achieved just by sitting around a table discussing with council officers and council, and council members. Fortunately, national and local government had already come to that conclusion. In 1998, Tahami Council realised that they would never have the sufficient money to refurbish all their estates. So they formed organisations like Taham Community Housing and Poplar Harker, which 
we're not part of the local authority, so we're not bound by so much by local authority rules about funding and the like. The Tent Association in 1998 briefly discussed this problem and quite rightly in my opinion at the time come to the conclusion that we were proud council residents and we wanted to stay council residents. 2001 changed all that. Residents realised that that could not continue if we wanted to change. At the time, sadly, it was also becoming more and more clear that the Tense Association Bar, which as I say had been going on since 1972, was no longer a viable business concern. There were some nights when there were more people behind the bar than what there was in front of the bar. So, sadly in 2002, the bar closed. The Leopold Tense Association was no longer the right vehicle to take forward the concerns of the local residents and the local area. A purely resident only group wouldn't work. A partnership organisation had to be formed. So that is why in 2003 the Leopold Area Regeneration Team was formed which would aim to act as a partnership between residents and local groups.